go ahead and just copy that last line that we did since it'll be these other lines will be pretty much identical um, I'm gonna just paste those like that uh, the only things we're going to change on these are for the for the second line we'll go ahead and offset that by a couple of pixels uh, sending it to the right a little more and we'll also bump it down a couple of pixels so that should create a nice little offset there so this should be flashing in a different uh, color pattern actually it might be the same since these have already been processed these variables uh, it just sort of broadens broadens it out a little bit I don't think there's anything else I really want to change on that um, for our final one I'm going to set uh, set the, these values to be kind of right in between these last ones so it should draw in this order I'll draw the first flashing layer draw the second flashing layer and then draw the third and <clears throat> so if you should be able to kind of see what we're doing here I'm going to be setting this dark layer directly in the center of these other layers so it should be sort of a black text um, with uh, the XNA logo flashing around it um, so we get that right in between these two and uh, this time we won't be using our RGB values we're going to just set these to a very low uh, value to make it very dark so it's pretty much black let's have a look at that awesome looks pretty sweet so now to give it that uh, sort of retro feel uh, you can keep it this way if you want but I'm gonna show you how to kind of sharpen these edges a bit uh, in the old retro games you are you know the pixelation uh, will create sort of more jagged edges around our fonts and things like that especially when they're scaled so I'll show you the parameters to do that uh, it'll also come in handy later in our game uh, because you'll be able, you'll want to be able to scale your screen a bit without causing you know really fuzzy edges in your game you're, you're gonna want your environment to be crisp so uh, that will be doable so we'll go right up into our sprite batch dot begin and here's where we can add the parameters to uh, alter the way that our graphics are drawn so um, first thing we're going to do is our sprite sort mode and we'll set that to immediate and you can kind of read these uh, you know I don't want to have to explain every single parameter here but uh, you can read them this begins a sprite batch operation using a specified sort and blend state uh, object and default state objects uh, what does that mean not entirely certain can always uh, go out to the MSDN and check it out so uh, blend state uh, is going to be let's see alpha blend and then we are going to have our sampler state We'll set that to point clamp and depth stencil state dot default and then our rasterizer state oops, dot coal none and what we should see here is a, a dramatic change in the way that our uh, our text is drawn and really anything that we draw so as you can see our text is now a lot more crisp after having scaled it <clears throat> definitely not perfect you'll still see some fuzziness in between but it's not nearly as uh, fuzzy as it was before and it kind of gives our uh, <clears throat> font you know our overlay here kind of a nice crisp outline uh, it's a really nifty effect I think 
pretty nice for a very simple title screen. Uh, you, again, you can put as much work into this as you want, or you could just, you know, simply use a large sprite or something as your background. There's really any number of things that you could do for this. Uh, the reason I left this space down here is because in our next video, we will be creating our first menu. So that will be our main game menu to start games. Uh, usually there's an options or things like that at the beginning of your game. So. Uh, I guess that concludes this video. I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.